Hello, I'm Sean McDowell from Drinker's Corner, and I'm here to tell you about the history of gin. Gin, originally named Genevieve, was created in Holland as a pharmaceutical agent. It was used to treat kidney and stomach ailments, as well as gallstones and gout. You could say it was a type of genicillin. During the Dutch War for Independence, also known as the Eighty Years' War, Dutch soldiers discovered that Genevieve had an amazing calming effect before battle. During the battle for Antwerp, English soldiers, seeing how the Genevieve affected the Dutch troops, also began drinking Genevieve before battles, giving it the nickname Dutch Courage. When King William III, or William of Orange, took the English throne in 1689, he made a plethora of new laws that encouraged the distillation of English liquors. Because of these laws, anyone could distill spirits simply by posting a notice to distill on the street and waiting 10 days. Because gin was so easy to manufacture, since it was simply grain alcohol to silver juniper berries, gin's success ran rampant in the streets of London. This period of history is known as the gin craze. It was cheaper than beer or ale, and was often used to pay workers in lieu of wages. To further the already low price of gin, some distillers would use turpentine instead of juniper to flavor their gin. The Gin Act of 1736 created high taxes on vendors, which made the price of gin skyrocket. And since gin was a poor man's spirit, it wasn't long before consumers and shop owners alike began rioting in the streets. Eventually, taxes and prohibitive laws relaxed, and the Gin Act of 1736 was abolished in 1742. Another, much more successful Gin Act was declared in 1751 that forced distillers to only sell to licensed vendors and brought gin shops under the control of the local magistrate. With the Gin Act of 1751, gin shops slowly died out and were replaced by regal, elegant, and luxurious bars called gin palaces. As technology improved, so did the quality of gin. With the invention of pot stills, gin was being produced that was sweeter than gin as we have it today. The late 19th century brought into popularity Old Tom's Gin, which was an even sweeter type of gin, often using added sugar. Old Tom's Gin died out by the early 20th century, however. The invention of the column still, sometime between 1826 and 1831, made the process of distilling neutral spirits possible, which led to gin as we know them today. As all things in history eventually repeat themselves, gin found its way back into the world of medicine. Quinine, the only reliable anti-malarial drug at the time, would be dissolved into carbonated water, creating tonic water. As this tonic water tasted terrible, gin was added to it to mass the flavor of the quinine, hence the gin and tonic. Quinine is still added to tonic water today for flavor. As technology has improved, many varieties of gin are currently on the market. One such variety is slow gin, which uses the fruit of the blackthorn plant instead of juniper for its flavor. Because of gin's continuing success around the world, since 2009, the second Saturday in June has been declared World Gin Day. We here at Drinker's Corner hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you also subscribe to our channel, and we look forward to seeing you next time.